What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be turning this old business PC into a little emulation powerhouse. Now before we get completely started here, I just want to give you a little bit of a backstory on this PC. A few months ago I actually made a video on this same desktop. I picked this up on eBay for a friend. It was $72 ship, no DVD drive, no hard drive, but it does have the i3-6100 and 8GB of RAM. This was purchased to install Android x86 on it, and that's exactly what I did. I gave it back to my buddy, he used it for about a month, and then it just kind of sat around for a little while. I talked him into selling it back to me, I gave him 80 bucks for it, and I think it's well worth it. This is actually a very capable emulation machine, just like it sits. So in this video, we're going to see how this machine performs with emulation. Like I mentioned, it does have the i3-6100, 8GB of DDR4, and there was no hard drive installed in it, but I had a 500GB Western Digital laying around and I just threw it in there. I would recommend using an SSD, but I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible. I've been searching around eBay and I haven't been able to find this Lenovo M500 for around the same price, but I have found the HP ProDesk 600G2 with the i5-6500 for around $120 to $150. But you gotta keep in mind, when you're buying these pre-built small form factor PCs, upgradability is kinda scarce. Now, you're gonna kinda stick with the CPU you have. Some of them have two RAM slots, some of them have four, like this one here. But if you're looking to upgrade the GPU down the road, the highest I would go is a GT1030, and that's all because of the power supply that comes in these. Most of them do have proprietary connections, and in most cases you could retrofit a power supply in here to get a little more juice for a higher end GPU like a GTX 1050 Ti low profile. But by the time you're done with that, you could have built a little 2400G or a 3200G PC with tons of upgradability down the road. So that's definitely something to keep in mind, but for me, I want to leave this just like it is and see what we can get out of it. So as it sits right now, I have about $80 into this PC, but I did need to pick up a few accessories. I wanted Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and I needed a way to connect this over HDMI because it only has a DisplayPort built in. So I just picked up a cheap DisplayPort to HDMI adapter, and yes, sound will come through this. A 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi dongle, and a Bluetooth adapter. So after everything's said and done, I only have about $100 into this machine. And that's the price point I wanted to be at for a cheap emulation setup. All right, so here we are. Quick spec overview. I'm running Windows 10 Pro. I have that Intel i3-6100 at 3.7 gigahertz. This is a dual core CPU with four threads, eight gigabytes of DDR4, 2133 megahertz RAM, and that built-in Intel HD 530. Definitely nothing to write home about, but it should handle emulation pretty well. Now in this video, I'm going to be testing out some of my favorite emulators. PPSSPP for PSP, ReDream for Dreamcast, PCSX2 for PS2, Dolphin for GameCube, RetroArch for Saturn, and we'll even throw a little bit of 3DS at it. So I can already tell you right off the bat, with the specs we have here, we're not going to be able to run SimU, RPCS3, or Xenia for Xbox 360. That requires a much more powerful PC, but there are thousands and thousands of great games that you can play with this using these emulators listed here. And if we're able to run all of this, we can run the lower end stuff just fine. Since I've added the Bluetooth adapter, I was able to connect my Xbox One controller should show up here in a second, there we go. So I'm not using any wired controls at all. I would actually like to make another video on this PC with some PC gaming, either adding a GT1030 or just leaving it like it is. Now, if you love the game you're playing, there's really no reason you can't play it at 720p 30 FPS, and I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me, but if you love the game, you should be able to play it just fine like that. If you're interested in seeing another video on this PC with a dedicated GPU or just leaving it like it is, let me know in the comments below. But this video is all about emulation, so let's go ahead and get right into it. For all of these games, I will have Afterburner running up in the top left hand to corner. We have the GPU usage, memory usage, CPU usage, speed, okay, temperature, wattage, RAM, average FPS, and FPS. I'll be showcasing two to three games for each of these emulators, and each segment will be about 30 seconds per game except for PS2. I wanted to make those a little bit longer. Starting out a little lighter, we have some PSP emulation using PPSSPP. Performance has been amazing on this little machine with PSP emulation. I'm at 4X resolution, and I've been able to play anything that I've thrown at it. Round two. Ah! 
excited! Next up, some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator upscaled to 1080p. You shouldn't have any trouble at all with Dreamcast as long as the game's compatible with the emulator. Here's some Sega Saturn, and this actually surprised me. This little machine's handling Saturn really well, and I'm not using the Yoba Sanshiro core. I'm actually using RetroArch with the Beetle core, which does require a pretty beefy CPU. And as you can see here, we're getting full speed emulation with Nadathan. Unfortunately, 3DS isn't working too well on this machine. I mean, there are some games that are going to run at full speed, but this does require a decent GPU because I'm using that OpenGL back end. If we added a GT1030, I think we could get much better performance out of this. Another one that really surprised me was PS2 emulation using PCSX2. Now I am at the native resolution here. I'm using PCSX2 1.5, they're the development builds. But here's Ratchet and Clank running at a really good frame rate of 60. You can upscale some games on this PC like Tekken 5 and some other lower end games. But for instance, Ratchet and Clank and Shadow of the Colossus needed to be set at native to get that 60. But overall, I'm really impressed with this little chip.
two. Fight. And finally, some GameCube emulation using Dolphin. This is Rogue Squadron 2 at 720p. Now, other games can be upscaled to 1080 and even 1440, but this is just a really hard game to emulate, so I just kept it at 720, and it's super smooth. I wanted to showcase a couple harder to emulate games like Rogue Squadron 2 and Auto Modalista. This has a lot of trouble on lower end machines, but I'm upscaled to 1080p and it's running at full speed. Freeze! I said freeze! Surprisingly enough, this small form factor i3 powered PC does emulation really well. Like I mentioned, this isn't going to do SimU, it's not going to do PS3, and it's not going to do Xbox 360 like it sits. And even with an upgraded GPU like a GT 1030, it'll still struggle with PS3 and SimU. But overall, there's thousands and thousands of games that can run on this thing like it sits without any dedicated GPU. And if you can pick one of these up for around $100 to $130, I think it's well worth it. Your best bet would be eBay, OfferUp, or Let's Go to find something like this, but they are out there and you can find them for this price. I will leave a few eBay links in the description. It's going to be the HP G2 600. It's a little more pricey by about $20, but you do get the i5 6500, which is a more powerful chip than the i3 in this one here. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing some PC games running on this, either with the built-in Intel HD 530 GPU, or a dedicated GT 1030, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.